Hi there, nice people, hello lady and gentlemen. Tonight, I'm going to talk about four months experience with using this Workshop Precision Adjust Professional. To say that I sharpen a lot of blades of a lot of different kinds during this time would be an understatement. The only type of blades that I haven't gotten to are the ones at longer than six inches. During that time, I sharpened blades as little as this classic Swiss knife and as long and heavy as this Buck 119. The selection of steels was also not short on choices. From basic and a little bit anemic 1095 carbon steel and equally as anemic 420C, all the way to S90V, S45VN, heat treated well into the 60s, even a couple of Magnicot blades that were heat treated to about 63 to 65 Rockwell hardness. The shapes vary too, from straight like a ruler edge to a fancy recurved edge, tanto blades which are like sharpening two completely different knives in one blade, blades with a fancy compound grinds, and very pronounced bellies. Blades that were so thick it took half a day to put a fine angle edge on. Blades that are narrow to begin with, with a swedge on top that makes it near impossible to clamp in the jaws of the device. I guess you get my point. I've sharpened a lot of blades using Workshop Professional Precision Adjust. And I already had plenty of experience with this older basic Workshop Precision Adjust device. In comparing the two, it's like comparing, I don't know, a battleship to a fishing boat. And you know you can fish off the battleship, but you definitely can't fight certain battles on a fishing boat. That said, there were issues I discovered almost immediately after purchasing this device. So let me explain what I mean by issues. In this case, I don't mean aesthetics. When you're sharpening a knife, the whole purpose of this machine is to lock the angle between the device that holds the knife and the abrasive me media. If this angle is off, you're going to get wobbles in your grind, in your primary bevel. Here you can see an example of wobbly edge. I don't know if you can see it. Let me mark it with a magic marker. Right here, look at the edge, don't look at my line. Several here. You can see in this whole area, the angle changes. And all it is because they're sort of different levels of rocking and play in this device. Let's start from the top. What they fixed as compared to the old one, the old one had an immense rocking in the entire assembly here. The threads were pretty loose. And the entire thing was flexing and rocking. And that's why they made this frame out of aluminum. And they fixed one major issue, which was the play in the adjustment screw versus the bushing that uh, runs, uh, runs on the screw. But unfortunately, they left this side, the opposite side, pretty primitive. What it is, Right here, it's an open sleeve design with a little bit of a leaf spring molded into plastic here. But this leaf spring doesn't leave enough tension to prevent this rocking. It rocks that way. I hope it shows on the camera. And maybe even more concerning, let me put this away. I like how neatly it stows here. Even more concerning, right now, the knife supposedly is tightened in the clamp and ready for sharpening. And this is in the anti-rocking backing base is installed. And I still get that much rocking in it. 
Both of these are easily fixed. The next problem, which has order of magnitude higher consequences than these two. And I discovered it, it only sort of showed its ugly face after I've been using this device for a while, after at least 30, 35 sharpenings. As you know, the Workshop Precision Pro comes with an inclinometer or angle finder. I zeroed out to the frame and then I throw it on this rod, right? Let's make sure, sometimes I tap it a little just to make sure it's reading correctly. This inclinometer is only capable of reading a quarter degree minimum. So it adjusts in quarter degree. So once I found my angle here, for this to be consistent, the angle on the top should be the same as the angle on the bottom. And as you can see, there is half a degree, quarter to a half degree difference there, which is significant. Let's do it again. Let's see if it gives me a repeatable angle. So it's still 22 here. Move it down. I get it 22 and a half. And uh, I wouldn't have noticed it if it didn't constitute itself in a very pronounced rocking. It rocks primarily in an up, up and down direction. That's what I noticed when I was sharpening. And uh, what's even more annoying and can lead to undesirable consequences, because it's now rocking, it's not lining up with the lower slide bushing here and it hits this bump and you get this jerky motion which interrupts your stroke. And I thought that was a major issue. So I'm going to show you very quick, very inexpensive and quite reliable fixes, uh, starting with a simple and progressing into what it takes to fix this rocking. First of all, why it occurred. You probably guessed by now why this rocking has occurred. But if you watch this video a little longer, you will find out if your guess was correct. And I definitely have a very reasonable, inexpensive and easy do-it-yourself solution to fix it, which I'm going to go on a limb and recommend engineers and manufacturing folks at uh, Workshop implement that solution as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it like this. And for now, I'm just going to remove this device, the jaw, and I'm going to address this rocking here first. It takes a lot less time to fix it than talk about it. This is just a regular zip tie, four millimeter zip tie. I'm going to uh, route it through here, through the frame. It doesn't matter which uh, side the head here is on. You know, I'm going to connect the ends. I'm going to run it down and tighten it. Then I like to I like to use my pliers to give it a good tightening here. The angle of the camera makes it awkward. So I'm just going to grab it here and give it a good old tightening. So it can still slide off, but you should be able to slide it right back on by compressing this uh, little leaf. Yeah. So it's on, and what it does, this little leaf spring here that is molded into plastic is now applied the entire length of this sleeve right here and uh, I'm gonna use my multi-tool scissors to trim uh, it's awkward with a camera I'm gonna trim yeah, 
There you go. So now let's check out our wobble. It all but disappeared. There's not even half a degree of wobble. Now, does the angle adjustment still work? It feels a little tighter. It feels twice as tight it was before, as it was before, but it runs nice and smooth. That is a little bit slower. So if you really desire to go fast, you need to move a long way. You just pop it off and now it's a lot easier. And uh, a little bit finagling, you just simply pop it back on. A little dexterity is involved. And it helps not to do it in front of the camera. There you go. Right, so I'm moving to the next bigger concern, which is visible here. So I'm putting the blade in the clamp. And when it's lifted like that, you can see it well. There is a lot of rotational roll here. See, I can isolate the rocking here. And I don't know if it's clear on the camera. I'll try to zoom in. Let me zoom in here. There you go. Same idea. You take a... Uh, let me take that out again. Same idea. What I did is I took a simple zip tie and uh, I zipped it around the sleeve, okay? And um, now when I put this back in, it goes a little tighter. Now my my rocking is reduced by at least 90 95 percent and uh, the vertical rocking is all but gone so i'm going to place it here and now there's practically there's a little flex it's the entire assembly sort of flexes a little bit but it's minimal look so i'm applying at the extreme point and i'm getting less than a quarter degree rotation I wonder if I can measure it. So without the zip tie ring here, I get up to a degree of rotation. Here's our zero. Now we get a quarter of a degree. So now we're going to address the major problem, which is the rocking in the abrasive media carrier here. So there are six screws that are holding it together. And uh, you can, by the way, pull it off completely it's very easy just don't lose the bumper in the bushing maybe a little easier for you and then just uh remove the screws it's the last screw get there all right and what that reveals is these two plastic you can call them bushings or bearings and they center this carrier or carriage on the rod and examining these two bushings, which are nylon, and nylon is a very tough and self-lubricating material, but it's not wear-proof. You can see that there is a significant amount of wear on the inside surface of this bushing. On a new bushing, the ID would be six millimeters. 
change the angle of the camera here because it's important for you to see that the inside surface egged out almost a millimeter. And that is a lot of wear. What I did though, I went on uh, Amazon and uh, you can order these self-lubricating bronze bushing. Um, this whole bag of 10 bushings, so that's five replacements worth, set me back eight bucks. And I'll provide link to Amazon um, shop that sells them. These measure 10 millimeters outside diameter, 10 millimeters width, and six millimeters inside diameter, which is a pretty standard metric size. And they fit perfectly, as you can see. There's no wobble in this direction. And they line up nicely, the rod right through. So here I am, I'm gonna close it up just like it is. Um, these you no longer need. You can make beads out of these to remind you of this little project. Or you can put it to, in the envelope and send it to Workshop, addressed to their engineering department, and just tell them, thanks. You know, you see Magnet trying to play with me. Uh, don't over tighten it. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to cross thread this because I don't think they sell this piece by itself. They might sell the entire rod assembly, which is expensive. Okay, and now to put it back on the rod, you just bring it to the rod. I go by how the W is orientated. It has to be up or toward the frame. And um, you slide it on. And now you put the bumper, the rubber bumper on first and then the nylon bushing that holds the bumper and what it does, it limits the stroke, okay? So now we're ready to put everything together. Yep. Check for function. And uh, set the blade up, make it ready for sharpening. So I got 24 and a half here. Let's see here. 24 and a half. And I'm not going to bore you with the entire sharpening process. It takes about 15 minutes. You can do that too. You can turn it into a handheld strop. And it strops nicely. I feel like I'm Bob Ross when I do that. All right, to me, a sharp knife should cut unsupported paper towel that's not under tension. It should get through the edge, going in one direction, and make a cut, not a tear, right here. You'll hear on the camera. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, sharp knife. What is our steel here? It's 80 CRV2, so it's a uh, basically a very good high-end carbon steel let's see how it does here here's some printer paper a knife that's sharp enough to uh, to cut a paper towel like this this is what it's gonna look and sound like with a printer paper you hear it no tearing just swoosh that's that's um, 
that's a sharp knife right there. And you can carve around and, and all that. And then, uh, yeah. So in the end, two and a half dollars worth of bronze bushings and two zip ties did the trick. So I hope you enjoyed that. This is something um, I consider public service. If I find some mod that I can do to an expensive but useful item, I like to share it. It's not, I don't profit by it. I just enjoy doing it. If Workshop sees this video, that would be great if they, you know, send me a thank you note. Or if they don't think I'm right, let me know where I'm wrong. That would be nice too. Mine is a small channel that I started one year ago, and uh, I am almost at 4,000 subscribers. So I would really like to reach full 4,000 subscribers. It's about 100 more, maybe even less by now, before New Year's, which is, you know, less than a week from now, six days or so. So I would appreciate if you click this uh, subscribe icon here and uh, God bless. Happy New Year.